Today we finish our series of walking through the Mass as part of our Eucharistic revival. We've been learning to grow in our full active conscious participation in the work of God for His glory and for our sanctification. And so last time it was the solemnity of Corpus Christi and we talked about the reception of Holy Communion. At Mass, there's this amazing gift exchange that happens, that we come to give ourselves with Jesus to the Father, and then the Father gives himself back to us through the Eucharist, which is truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And just as the bread and wine placed upon the altar are transformed into Jesus himself, so too all of us who come and participate at Mass, we also through this, are being transformed to become more like Christ. So today, I want to conclude our series by talking about the five fruits, the five things that occur within us through the reception of Holy Communion. And the very first and principal fruit of receiving the Eucharist is that Jesus shares his life with us. You see, Jesus knew that he couldn't be physically present in bodily form as a man every single place on earth. It's a limitation of our human bodies. But yet he greatly desired to be with every single one of us in a real tangible way. And so he gave us his real sacramental presence hidden underneath what appears to be bread and wine. Now... He can be with us sacramentally, present everywhere, all across the the globe, wherever the Mass is celebrated, and he lives within the tabernacle. The Eucharist brings us into this intimate union with Jesus, a union that we can actually even experience in a very tangible way, the kind of, of delight when we receive our Lord in communion. Each time we receive him, if our hearts are open, he can choose to give us an experience, even of something like what uh, St. Therese of Lisieux experienced, she describes on her first communion day. This is how she describes it. I'm not going to give every detail, because some things lose their fragrance when opened to the air, and there are stirrings in the soul which cannot be put into words without destroying their delicacy. Oh, how sweet the first kiss of Jesus was. It was a kiss of love. I knew that I was loved, and I declared, I love you, and I give myself to you forever. Jesus made no demand on me. He asked for no sacrifices. For a long time, Jesus and little Therese had gazed at each other, and they understood each other. On that day, it was no longer gazing. It was union. There was no longer two of us. Therese had disappeared like a drop of water lost in the depth of the ocean. Only Jesus remained. Her joy was too great, too deep to be contained. She wept. Such a flood of divine joy cannot be born without tears. Now, this description that Therese gives, you know, may not be our experience every single time that we receive Holy Communion. And perhaps you might think, well, that's got to be rare. It's probably just for for saints like St. Therese. I couldn't experience something like that. But for others, you may be like, yes, I've had that kind of experience before, in particular in receiving Holy Communion. Because, as I mentioned, this is the principal fruit of the Eucharist, that it brings us into such intimate union with Jesus, a union that, at times, he can allow us to experience with sensible delight. And this leads us to the second fruit, the second thing that happens for us when we receive Holy Communion. It's that the Eucharist unifies us. We call the Eucharist communion when we come forward because it unites us with Jesus. But not just with him, but with everyone, with each other, for everyone who is in Christ. So do we see divisions within our family, within our world today? Yes, we do. Well, what's the answer? Well, it's the Eucharist. Perhaps that might sound a little strange, that going to Mass is actually the answer to all of the world's problems. Because it is. 
But all we have to do is look back through history. Many great battles were won through the liturgy, through the worship of God. Because it's really not you and I who solve any of these things. God is the one who solves them. And so we must come to him. The only one who can win the battles. So we see this in examples like the freeing of the Israelites from slavery in the Old Testament. That was through the Passover celebration. The defeat of Jericho. That was the liturgical procession around the city until the walls crumbled. The naval battle of Lepanto was won through the recitation of the rosary. The fall of communism in Poland came about through actions like the night masses at Nuahuta. You see, there's nothing more powerful than the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross as presented to us through the sacrifice of the Mass. So, any of the troubles that we have today in our society and in the world, it will be defeated through the Eucharist. Any difficulties, divisions that you find in your own home and in your own families, the answer is the Eucharist. So receiving our Lord unites us with Him and with each other. The overcoming of, of strife and disunity that I just mentioned, is really a result also of the third fruit, the third thing that comes about from our receiving the Eucharist. And that's that the Eucharist separates us from sin. At every Mass, we already learned several weeks ago, at every Mass, all of our venial sins are wiped away through the penitential act at the beginning. Uh, Mortal sins, as I've mentioned, we go to the sacrament of reconciliation first to, to reestablish our relationship with the Lord so that we can fully give ourselves over to Him and He can give Himself back to us. But the Eucharist does also prevent us from future sins, including future mortal sins. It doesn't mean that it's a guarantee that if you receive communion, you'll never sin again. It's not some kind of magical thing that takes away our free will, of course. But the closer that we get to Jesus, especially through Holy Communion, the less likely it is that we will want to go running off, chasing after things that ultimately leave us unsatisfied. So those are the first three fruits. The fourth one is that it commits us to serving our neighbor, in particular the poor, those that are in need. Once we've received Jesus, the greatest gift that there is, and experienced how much he loves us, then his love will cause us to overflow and want to share him with those around us. We want others to have what we've received, everything that they need to be happy and holy. The Jesus that we recognize here in the Eucharist, we're now to bring to those around us. And that's why after receiving Holy Communion, the Mass ends very quickly. I don't know if you ever thought about that before, or just how fast the Mass ends after Holy Communion happens. There's a final prayer and a blessing, and then go forth. The Mass is ended. And in Latin, that, that phrase, that last line, is ite misa est. Uh, misa is where the name Mass comes from. It's also the root of the word mission. So we come to Mass so that we can be sent on a mission. Go forth. You are sent. We're each given a mission out in the world. In this context, we can think about how next weekend we begin implementing the structural changes of our new families of parishes with a new Mass schedule. Uh, but more importantly, we're being called to respond to Jesus' invitation for a, a cultural change within our parishes, not just a structural one. A cultural change to be missional parishes, missional communities, that we don't just exist for ourselves, but we exist for others that are out in our communities, to evangelize, to go and find the lost sheep and bring them to the Lord. Last weekend in the gospel, Jesus looked out upon the crowds that were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. And would not Jesus continue to look out upon our world today, 
and see so many who do not know him that are troubled and abandoned. The harvest is abundant, he said last week, but the laborers are few. So ask the master to send so ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Now when Jesus said that to his disciples, he didn't just mean for them to pray that other people would do that. And in particular, you know, in our context, maybe to pray that other people would become priests and would be there to serve. Um, perhaps so that we can just go back to the way things always were in our parishes. But in reality, Jesus called each of them to follow him, to actually go out. They were part of the mission too. And so that's the same thing for us today, is not just to pray that others will do it, but to ask the Lord, how are you sending me? Because he sends each one of us. We are being called to go on mission, to go forth. Mother Teresa said that every Holy Communion fills us with Jesus, and we must, with Our Lady, go in haste to give him to others. For her, it was on her first Holy Communion Day when Jesus came into our life. Uh, that would be the, the visitation. Uh, and so for all of us, too, he made himself the bread of life so that we, like Mary, become full of Jesus. We, too, like her, be in haste to give him to others. We, too, like her, to serve others. And that leads us to the fifth and the final fruit that comes from the Eucharist. The Eucharist is what makes us the church. The most distinctive thing about us as Catholics is the Eucharist. We wouldn't be Catholic if it were not for the Eucharist that joins us, bonds us together. As we've learned, we come here to Mass to give ourselves to the Lord our whole lives, our whole families, to offer our whole selves to God. And this great gift exchange where when we give ourselves to Him, He gives Himself back to us. Filled with this life, we're sent out to bring Him to others through the rest of the week. After a week goes by, then we come back here to Mass to give ourselves back to God again and so He can fill us back up again. It's kind of like after we do a certain amount of driving, we've got to go stop and fill up the tank again. So, same thing with us and our souls. After a week, we must stop, come back here, and let our souls be refueled with the bread of life. So, as we begin our new family of seven parishes, the Holy Spirit Catholic parishes, uh, don't get caught up in the sorrows, perhaps, of change, or the temptation to complain when things aren't exactly the way that we would like them to be. Because all of us are one family. We're all one church because we have the Eucharist. It is Jesus who makes us the church. Regardless of the precise family of parishes or the specific priests who are serving us or the specific time and places where Mass is celebrated, regardless of all those things, the Eucharist makes us the church. It separates us from sin. It unites us to Jesus and to each other. It commits us to serving our neighbor. Do not be afraid, Jesus says in the gospel today. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to go and bring our Lord to others. Be brave. God is with you. Go forth. You are sent.